he was a lot of fun to work with. You never knew what he was going to do next. And, uh... You know told him to do. <laughs> <laughs> he was a loose cannon. Uh, and I really... I think working in the sequel would be a good move for my career as well. People sometimes recognize me on the street. I'll yell, hey, you were Katinka! I'll say, yeah, <laughs> that was me. Uh, but it hasn't really changed my life that much. I still live in the same studio apartment. Didn't pay too well, this job. I don't know, it was fun. Huh. Yeah, well, the thing about Cube Perry is that... She didn't work on I did a little bit. Yes, I late. kept those wigs away. We needed a wig when Matt... <laughs> yeah, we, we, needed we really we could have used and then a where wig. Where was it? Where but were you? <laughs> there was no budget for the wigs. The wig budget was zero. I don't know why I was there even. Then I uh, I helped I helped clean up that last day. That famous last. That day. famous last day. And it was my idea to beat Perry with the chairs or Frank. Perry and I beat Frank with the chairs. And uh, oh, and I told Sarah. I directed Sarah on the on the breakup Breakers. with Matt scene. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what to say. I said, we're through. And then we, Frank and I had that whole argument about <laughs> reaching across. He right. said that he sh he said that she should reject the flowers with the, the left, left hand. hand. Yeah, that was, yeah. But I said, no, it's ridiculous. If someone threw a football at you, you wouldn't go, oh, you'd go like this. Right hand block, not left hand block. What do you think? So thank God I was there. So is there anything to the rumors about you and Pierce Brosnan hooking up? Oh, well, I ran into him and I asked for a signed picture and he wrote something kind of racy on it. I think it must have been late in the day because it wasn't too clever. But it did get to the point and so I gave him my number and he called me later that, well, later that week, must have been later that week. And uh, we got together, but then all of a sudden he just ran off and said something about having to meet Q. I think he's a little, I don't know. He took his part a little too seriously, I think. And there's his wife. Uh, huh? And then there's his wife and kids. Well, there's that too, but I'm saying he's a little bit off the deep end, I think. Yeah, he's still hot, though. If he calls me, well, I'm not doing anything better. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Okay, I think we're good. What, what, what movie is looking to be in, in the future? Got any offers? Well, there's a sequel. I think I'll do that. And, uh... Are you sure there is a sequel? I'm hoping. Okay. There's been talk. So I'm offered talk. the part. Right. There's a sequel. I have the part. Are you sure you've been offered the part? <laughs> yes, I've been offered the part. As the policeman stripper. Ah. Right. In fact, my part is better this time. I'm a cop stripper. Do you expect better a, pay? Oh, well, hopefully. Because <laughs> you shouldn't. You should get some peanut m and <laughs> I'll work for cheap. It would be really great to be in a Bond movie, but that's it's the way the it's not about the money. Well, right. It's a, it's a good stepping stone in my path to fame. Sounds good. Other than that, I really like working with Perry and Frank. What's up, Frank? Um, the idea for the Cube movie, actually, it was one of the first days of school, I think. And we were sitting in study hall because we didn't have a class. And we saw Matt Hunt doing his Rubik's Cube. He thought, what a weirdo. Why is he bringing that to school and doing it? Because he's obviously showing off. And we thought, well, it'd be a weird story. Like, what motivates him? Why does he do that? Uh, so we started putting the story together. We decided we wanted to make a movie. Come here. <laughs> and Mom. I don't care. <clears throat> we'll cut that. No, Maybe we no won't. And, uh... So we started going over it, and we went over a bunch of different things about what would motivate him. Like maybe he would solve it, and something on the cube would tell him like someone to kill, or we decided to go against that because that's kind of weird and too formulaic. But uh, we decided to go for a simple one, where he, uh, his girl dumps him, and he goes through all the emotions, and each color on the cube represents an emotion that he goes through. 
And uh, so we basically focused on color and emotion. And I th we finished all of that, the whole idea for the movie, in the school library about a week or two after after the first day, and then we started filming. Sure, sorry. All right. Um, we filmed it in the auditorium, which has a stage. And we noticed when we were looking over the auditorium, looking in the back, looking for things we could use for the movie, we saw some fake walls. And we thought, oh, that'd be good, because we only need like a small white room. But we realized that they have rollers on the bottom, and there's like a, a foot and a half space where it doesn't touch the, the space. It's black floor and then white, white walls. So we got some, I don't know what it was, maybe like spacers or fake walls or something from the back also. We put them down, and they were made of really flimsy wood. And we had to cover it with layers and layers of other like balsa wood and cedar. Really thin stuff, and it was barely, you could barely walk on it, and you can barely put a table and chair on it. And I guess Mr. Gr Dr. Gray's came in the next day and like took it all down because it was very dangerous. And he put up some real sturdy flooring, which is actually much, much better. But a real pain to move around all the time, so it was real heavy. And uh, what else am I going to talk about? Oh, well, you can talk about how many times I had to put it away. Like, yeah, I had to put it, it away a bunch of times. For the stupid Ordway. Yeah, the Ordway. Thanks a lot, kids. You had to put the flooring, up, flooring away up many times. And then we have to put the walls back, figure out how the walls go in between the spaces and the, the risers. It was a pain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Basically, we used a eleven dollar, eleven dollars fifty cents for the entire budget of the film. Not taking into account the expense for a camera and space was free basically. Um, overall, I think we did a good job with our eleven fifty. We bought the cube that you see towards the end of the movie, and actually throughout. Um, hair. One of the major problems we had in filming this movie was uh, the changing hairstyles of our lead role man, Matt Hunt. He, uh, one day, he walks in onto the set, out of the blue, with starting to get weaved hair, like braided, braided, we, yeah, braided hair, and every day it would be more and more of his hair until his whole hair was, whole head was crawling with these. It was quite frustrating, and uh. We couldn't really hide it because we're really on a time restraint. So basically, we just winged it from there and hope that not many people would notice it. But if you look throughout the movie, his hair is in different shapes and styles. And it's really quite frustrating, but so you get when you pay him no money. So clothing. Once again, uh, limited by our budget, our clothing of Matt and characters, Sarah basically had the same clothing, but Matt throughout the movie had different clothes on, and that. We could say that it had to do with the change in theme and whatnot of the movie, but actually it was just different days and he was wearing different clothes. But I mean, get away from all the, the small intricate parts of the, or the small problems with the film and overall it looks pretty good the way I think. Our major major influences for the movie came from a uh, movie Memento and the way the shots were shot in that film, and also a couple of times by a couple of our shots were influenced by Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, the shot where it's the close up of Matt's face, but it's in small increments in black and white. Um, our soundtrack, I thought, was. It was very well done and well thought out. Um, uh, Day in the Life, the end of that song, or the middle of that song with the, the whole spinning of the, the room, I think that fit real well. And that's probably the best thing we could find in that situation. So overall, the soundtrack, everything, all the acting came together. It's not professional, but it's pretty good for first time, first big feature film.
And I'd say I'd like to do it again.